Ideally, everything is balanced. On the water, it's all about balancing the wing and foil by positioning your weight between the two. When you lose your balance, you need to make a correction within a second or so, or you will fall. When taxiing, you get some practice balancing the wing. When you do the glide exercise, which I covered in a previous video, you get some practice just balancing on the foil. This video covers the first of a series of exercises to help you maintain the glorious feeling of flying between both. You will be balancing your wing and foil. In the many hours you spent taxiing, the main goals were to not fall and to go fast enough to get onto the foil. As soon as you launch onto the foil, your relationship to speed changed dramatically. Your speed can now range from too slow to stay on the foil to kind of scary fast. The key is to take control of your speed so you can use it to your advantage. If you haven't already, please watch and master the material covered in my best posture and control video before you work on this exercise. If you jump ahead and learn new things while using inefficient, more difficult posture and control techniques, you will be reinforcing bad habits, which will limit your future potential. You can watch this and all my videos ad-free on Patreon. You'll have exclusive access to improved versions of some of my most important, popular videos. Plus, you'll be able to watch new ones one week before they're available here on YouTube. Please consider showing your gratitude for the dozens of hours it takes me to make each major new video. How to do the speed control exercise. Start by going directly across the wind. Check your posture. Be sure your front arm is straight, you are standing tall, and your foot stance is right. Bring your gaze ahead of your board, and if possible, pick something on the horizon to aim for. You will be trying to maintain a straight course. Start by bringing your leading wingtip closer to the water. Lower your straight front arm down, pivoting from the shoulder. Maintain your course by making small adjustments to the side-to-side -side angle called roll of your foil board with your back ankle. If you start to turn towards the wind, push your back toes down. If you start to turn downwind, lift your back toes up. Maintain level flight by shifting your weight to control the front to rear called pitch angle of your board. If the nose comes up, bend your front leg and straighten your back. If the nose starts to go down, bend your back leg and straighten your front. Use your peripheral vision as needed to monitor your height while you keep your eyes on the horizon for balance. When you are going as fast as you comfortably can, start to slow back down. Just reverse the process I described for going fast. Lead the movement by slowly raising your front arm at the shoulder in small increments this time until you are stable in each new, slightly slower speed. Make this process gradual, especially in lighter wind, when you don't have a lot of extra power in your wing to play with. You are looking for the minimum speed that your setup will allow without pumping. Once you find it, ride that speed for a few seconds to complete one cycle of the speed control exercise. When you are first learning this, if you have enough space, go fast and slow again. In the high winds, a complete cycle will not take long once you get the hang of it. To go for your next transition attempt, always get to your fastest comfortable speed before you tack or jibe. If you are working on tacks and you have the space, do the glide exercise too. Most people that can launch onto the foil will be able to do this exercise without falling, yet it still hones a very important set of skills. To maximize your benefits, push the limits on your maximum and minimum speeds. Try the exercise in lighter winds 
or with a wing that is a bit small for the day's conditions. Try it on different course headings, more towards and away from the wind. Avoiding accidental yaw swivel when adjusting power. In these clips, I'm demonstrating how you can accidentally yaw or swivel your board when you're bringing up your wing or lowering it for that matter. You could bring your wing upwind by mistake, downwind by mistake. You could bring your wing and weight off to one side by mistake. Basically your wing and your body weight needs to be balanced over the foil and the speed control exercise is designed to help you control your foil and remain straight when you're changing the amount of power from your wing. How it feels when you accelerate faster or slower. Prepare for the exercise. Check your foot stance is right. For my students, that means in an L. Then feel that there is equal pressure between your feet. If not, scooch them towards the foot with more pressure, starting with the foot with less pressure until they're equal. As you lower your wingtip and bring your wing more vertical, your arms feel the horizontal force in the wing increase. Feel the forward pressure on your feet increase as well. As you traverse any wind chop at higher speed, Feel the pitch and or roll action of the foil board speed up. Feel these more rapid pressure changes in the soles of your feet. Feel shifts in pressure between your toes and heel of each foot with your front foot sensing to help maintain flight height and rear foot for your course. Feel your ankles and knees bend in response to these pressure changes. As you raise your wing back up, Feel the foil board slow. Feel the pressure in both arms reduce. Feel lighter with less forward pressure on your feet. Feel the slower frequency movements of the board. This is a lot for you to sense at the same time. When wing foiling, your performance increases with the strength and size of your awareness. We say, I was in the zone when everything seems to be working. This is when you have gained the muscle memory, which almost automatically actuates the small movements you need in response to changes in wind and waves. Yet even at that level of performance, the clarity of your awareness to multiple sensory inputs in each moment remains key. To balance your wing and foil, your weight must always be held in perfect relationship to them in order to control your speed, direction of travel, and flight altitude. Your awareness is piloting your flights between the wind and the waves. Why your front arm is your main speed controller. When using the control techniques I teach, the bending of your back arm controls the angle of your wing to the wind flow but that alone is often not enough to control the power of your wing. You need to dump some power up into the sky too, which your front arm initiates. Note that in a sudden strong gust like this, your arms must do their respective jobs simultaneously. These diagrams show the depowered and powered up wing positions. These side views show the horizontal component of wing force that drives your foil board forward. In the powered up position, this component of the force is a larger percentage of the total force generated by your wing, so you go faster. These diagrams show the front views. The powered up wing position also generates more horizontal force that's trying to push your foil board sideways. Note that in these simplified diagrams, I don't show how your weight position and foil board angle would need to be somewhat different to stay in balance because I'm only explaining the wing force aspect of the bigger picture 
as it relates to your speed. Conclusion Mastering Jibes Next up in the series. This exercise is an invaluable tool for anyone learning a new transition such as a jibe or tack or even when simply getting used to a new equipment setup. When combined with the glide exercise I described in a previously released video, you can gain most of the skills and muscle memory you need to complete fully foiling jibes. When you jibe, you need to maintain your flight height throughout the turn, which is what you start to learn in the glide exercise. To jibe your wing in the standard overhead transition, your wing position will go from powered up fast, to slow, to glide, back to slow, and finally to fast again in the new direction. My next video in the Balancing Wing and Foil series will cover the S-turn exercise to complete the standard jibe picture. I'm creating that video after the others because it is an exercise that is fairly well represented in other wing foiling channels. My video, however, will be in the context of the posture and control techniques that I teach.